Hello community, great to have you back. Today we're going to talk about a combination of a large language model and a vision transformer. And we have here two versions, we're going to talk about Lava, a large language and vision assistant. Yeah, I know it sounds like Lama, but we will use Lama for Lava. So here we have the research paper, just to tell you we have two versions. In April of this year, we had Lava version 1, and I will focus here on the latest version on Lava 1.5, and the research paper was published on October the 5th, 2023. So, we have, yeah, University of Wisconsin-Madison, and this is a beautiful idea. Let me show you why. But at first, just to give you an idea, in a work week from Monday to Friday, let's see, here in October 2023, there are about 652 archive preprints just in the category artificial intelligence. So it is rather difficult to find an interesting research. But luckily, we are a community and one of my subscribers to this channel helped me and he said, hey, any chance you could do a video on the la Lava release? And I've never heard Lava before and I thought it was maybe Lama, but no Lava release. So thank you to my subscriber who sometimes give me a hint what is important to the community. So let's dive in. So here we have now the online demo, a Gradio demo. We adjust the temperature, top P, max output tokens. Yeah, 1K is max, okay. So our first ask is here, describe all the elements in this particular image. And Lava 1.5 comes back in the 13 billion uh, free trainable parameter model and tells us a 3D model of a living room filled with various furniture, object, couch, chair, several tables. What is strange, I ask now. And you get an answer, what is strange? The balloons are scattered throughout the room, their size and color vary, making the scene quite unusual, unconventional decoration. And if I ask how to improve this image, it comes back and says improve the image, enhance the lightning in the room, the furniture and room arrangement, re-evaluate the furniture arrangement. And then we have the color scheme, refine the color scheme, create a more harmonious and visually appealing environment. The textiles, add textiles such as rug, curtains or cushions to soften the overall look. And five, the personal touch, include your personal touch, artwork, family photos or whatever you like. And I say, hey, that sounds great. But if I take now another image, a synthetic image, can it also work? And I say, hey, what could be the intention of the creator of this image? And it comes back and says, hey, explore the fusion of human-like features with robotics element, creating a visually striking and thought-provoking scene. So quite a lot of interesting explanation what is here the topic and why this was created in the first place. And then I ask, can you guess what the text to image prompt is? And it comes back and says, hey, I cannot definitely determine the exact text to image prompt, but it will include robot face, neon light, human-like, futuristic. And I tell him, invent a text to image prompt for an AI system to duplicate this image, and you're not going to believe it. It creates here an AI prompt for, for example, DAL E3. Now, what is the system architecture of this? As you already guessed it, we have a pre trained visual encoder, a vision transformer from Clip. And this encoder is used to extract here the visual features from an input image. And of course, we need an LLM, a pre-trained large language model, such as LAMA. You can change to Vicuna or whatever you like. And this model is used to generate the text responses to the input image and additional instruction. Now you know. CLIP was something by OpenAI, and you have here the research paper from 2021. And the 
vision part, the vision transformer, the large part as a visual encoder is what we take from this clip. So input pre-processing, we have a 224 times 224 pixel image. We have positional encoding. We have transformer layers, 24 layers here in the large version. And we have all the beauty of self-attention, feed forward network, everything we have here in a vision transformer. If you are not really familiar with a vision transformer and its inherent mathematical beauty, because normally transformers in general lack a translation equivariance and the locality functionality, here in this video I explain the beauty of vision transformer if you are interested in a little deep dive. Otherwise, you see, we have the visual encoder, we have our LLM, and now we have to combine those two elements. And in Lava 1.0, the simplest, the really simplest thing was to do a linear projection layer to connect the visual encoder with the language encoder. Isn't this beautiful? Now, just to give you an idea how simple the mathematical operation is, here now from the original specification, we have an input image X. And we consider here from the pre-trained clip the visual encoder only part, the vision transformer large 14, which provides now the visual features Z. And the grid features before and after the last transformer layer are considered in our experiments, and we consider a simple linear layer to connect the image features to the word embedding space or your sentence embedding space. So what is the easiest mathematical operation? We have a trainable projection matrix W to convert Z into the large language embedding token, for example, H, which have the same dimensionality of the word embedding space in the language model. This is something simple, but important and something beautiful because we achieve now a mapping between our two vector spaces. And this will bring us a lot of performance. So here we have a sequence of visual token and here we have a simple single trainable projection matrix in the case of Lava 1.0. And you know, it is possible to have more elaborated schemes, for example, to connect the image and the language representation in vector spaces. You can also consider something like a Q-former in Blip2. And if you say, what is Blip2 and what is a Q-former here in a vision language model, seven months ago, I have here an explanatory video and a pure coding video for you, where you see how we apply Q-former and so on. So here we go. Now, apart from this simple but efficient three-part structure of lava, there's another clever, unique feature, and this is the training data set. And they, the authors decided here to go with a unique multimodal instruction following data set. And there is an inherent beauty to this. Now, if you have just images and just some image features and you want now to create instruction following data, what you do? You need the help of either hundreds or thousands of people who generate the data for you. Or if you have here central AI intelligence, you ask GPT-4 to do the job for you. So what we have? The authors use two types of the symbolic representation to encode the image as an LLM recognizable sequence. So either you have captions under your image when it says, hey, in this image, you see two people holding hands. So caption typically describe the visual scene from various perspectives. And in the background, you see a church and there are some celebration going on, whatever. Or if you have the image, you have bounding boxes. And those bounding boxes usually localize the object in the scene, and each box encodes the object concept and its spatial location within the image. And now, now comes the intelligent idea. They say, okay, I want to generate 
not one, but three types of instruction following data using GPT-4. So this is the not easy part. And I will show you the code, how GPT-4 does this for you. But also, please remember, you have to pay for GPT-4. So they decided, OK, GPT-4, we have three types of instruction following. We have a conversation between our AI assistant and a person asking question about the image. We have a detailed description where we have here, or generated by GPT-4, a rich and really detailed description of each and every object or person in the image, and also complex reasoning. And I think this is an interesting aspect, a question that arises by a step-by-step -step reasoning process following some rigorous logic. Very nicely done. So what the authors did, with the help of GPT-4, they had to pay for this, they collected 160,000 unique language image instruction following data samples. And they found that GPT-4 can consistently provide higher quality instruction following data as spatial reasoning compared even to human experts. So, great. So you see, we need here a massive, huge, parallel GPT-4 to be able to provide data set for other combination of language model and vision transformer models. So GPT-4 is really important in a complete ecosystem of AI for providing data for smaller models. So, okay, GPT-4 generates instruction following data. I will show you an example. They are able to generate a data set that is much more diverse and in-depth that we could be what could be created manually or is currently available. And this type of data can then or was used to train the models to perform more sophisticated tasks from question answering about an image and multiple steps of reasoning what is happening in this image. Something done nicely. So now remember, from the architecture, we have three parts. We have our LLM part, we have our visual encoder, and then we have here now our mapping between the vector spaces. So how we do the pre-training, how we do the fine-tuning. They came up here in the simpler case, and we look at first at the simple case, Lava 1.0, a two-stage instruction tuning procedure. And I look at A for the pre-training and then look at B for the fine-tuning, and you see what's happening. The pre-training for the feature alignment in this stage, they keep both the visual encoder and the large language model weights frozen. But the maximum is the likelihood of generating target answers with a trainable parameter theta. This is the projection matrix only. So we look now at this multimodal projector optimization. The image features H can be aligned with the pre-trained LLM word embeddings or sentence embeddings in our vector space. This stage can be understood as training a compatible visual tokenizer for the frozen LLM. And then after we have optimized our projector between the different vector spaces, we do a fine tuning end to end. So we only keep the visual encoder weights frozen and continue to update both the pre-trained weights of the projection layer and the LLM in our Lava 1.0 model. Really nice approach to this, but they also decided to go with two versions of this model. So they say, hey, we develop at first a multimodal chatbot here by fine tuning on the close to 160,000 unique language image instruction following data. But then they also go here for a science question and answer data set. And this contains 21,000 multimodal multiple choice question, rich domain diversity, three subject, 26 topics. Yes, yes, yes. So some scientific question and answering. And yes, this is also the reason why I like this. So how is all this training data set built? What is the code? Now the code in our case, since we're working with LLMs is rather easy. At first, 
you have to ask GPT-4 for what is here in or any visual encoder, what is in this image? So a list of instructions for a detailed image description. And the authors say they used here this multiple possibility. So describe the following image in detail, offer a thorough analysis of the image, clarify the contents of the displayed image with great detail, analyze the image in a comprehensive and detailed manner. So you see, they use a lot of different approaches to extract here the content. And then they have to generate this instruction following data set. And the prompt that they used here in blue, this is one prompt, this is their master prompt if you want, used to generate this image-based conversation from or by GPT-4. So what we tell GPT-4, say, hey, GPT-4, role system, you are an AI visual assistant and you are seeing a single image. The parallelization is another topic. What you see are provided with five sentences. So we have five semantically correlated English sentences describing the image you're looking at. Also all the questions you see as you see the image. And now the main task for GPT-4 is, given those five sentences, design a conversation between you as an AI assistant and a human person asking about the content of these photos. The answer should be in a tone that a visual AI assistant is seeing the image and answering the question, ask diverse question, give corresponding answers, include question asking about the visual content, include the object types, counting the objects, I see three cars and two aeroplanes, the object actions coming right next to each other, colliding, flying information, object locations, a relative position between the objects, and so on. So you want to get here the maximum information out of the positioning of all the different elements in the image. Only include questions and have definite answers, yes, yes, yes. Also include complex questions that are relevant to the content of, in the image, asking about background knowledge of the object in the image, asking to discuss about events happening in the image. Hey, this is a celebration. Yeah, for what? Oh, it's a birthday party. I can see the number three on the birthday cake and I can identify some uh, children running around and they are here in the age bracket of... So you see complex question answering and GPT-4 is exactly the AI to generate this complex question that will be our training data for this lava system. Great. Give me an example. Here are the caption. I give you, uh, if you are AI, I show you here a picture and I tell you five sentences. There's a movie theater, display, show time about the door. There's a red fire hydrant deep in the snow. Fire hydrant is a snow near a recently plowed sideway. The city has had a very hard winter with snow and the hotel for dogs in the snow a hotel for dogs and there's no in winter. So this is here now the semantic information in our sentences. And GPT-4 generates now here an image-based conversation. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, you get it. So you have a rich variety, a rich set of training data for the system. Now that we understand here the version 1.0, let's go to the latest actual version 1.5. Now, we did this sidestep to 1.0 to show you just the incremental elements added. So with 1.5, we use here an optimized vision transformer. Instead of 228 pixels, we have 336 pixels plus our single linear projection is now substituted by, if you want, a very simple neural network with a non-linear activation function and multi-layer perceptron projection we add to is the mapping between our vector spaces. And we have improved our training data set by adding some academic task-oriented data. Beautiful. And with this Lava 1.5, stronger baseline, better performance, 
achieves state-of-the-art across 11 benchmarks. Impressive. So, knowing what was LAVA 1.0, LAVA 1.5, we have now as our large language model, we go from LAMA 1 to Vicuna version 1.5, and from LAMA 1 with 7B to 13 billion free trainable parameter, our vision transformer, our clip, vision transformer large, we extend now to 336 pixels, our linear projection layer becomes now a multi-layered perceptron with two hidden layers and we add some new high quality data sets for the training procedure. You see, this is all there is. We just substitute the LLM, we improve to the best version here of our clip vision encoder. I think this is from mid-2022, so it's by far not the latest. We optimize here just to a MLP. This is also years ago, but this is a simple model, but it has some clever ideas implemented and it has therefore a good performance. So for Ben, for my younger clients, for my younger use viewers, <laughs> I'd go here Wikipedia, multi, what is a multi-layer perceptron, fully connected neurons with a non-linear kind of activation function. So you are now able to distinguish data that is not linearly separable. If you want to have an idea how this looks, here it is. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the input layer, the different hidden layers, the activation function, and, 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 how the feed forward is computed, how backprop is computed, the gradients are computed, there's an article I can recommend in towardsdatascience.com. So, Ben, get an idea. What is an MLP? Because this is an important structural element in our model here. Okay, this is also, if you want, a projector between different vector spaces. And let me give you another example. A week ago, I did a video about Microsoft's Autogen, where we have multi-AI agents interacting and we have a retrieval augmented generation if you have vector stores. And I told you that rack fails and I tried to explain this to you why and I showed you here my operative system where I have here a stream of about 20,000 pages a week. This is additional training data and I built here a sentence a transformer system, an expert system where I have a weekly or sometimes only a monthly fine-tuning of my expert system to incorporate more than 20,000 new scientific pages per week. So I update here, not only here the embedding, but I update and fine-tune here the complete expert system. I do the same, as I told you, I have a Lama 2 model and then I have some other smaller models, not ChatGPT, not GPT-4. This would be much too expensive to fine tune this every week or every month. But the important part was I update here my, if you want vector database, my vector store. I have extended this to an AI system, to an expert system. And with the same data I update here, my LLM. And therefore, I have a coherence between the different vector spaces, between the embedding, the external data embedding, and here, if you want, the logic and the understanding of an LLM. And without here the continuous fine-tuning of my smaller models concerning the topology of the vector spaces, my two spaces here, the information spaces, they will drift apart and I will have a decoherence in my two vector spaces. So for a deeper look, have a look at the video, then you understand exactly what I mean. But interesting is this happened here and I had to do a two process fine tuning system. Now here with lava, this is done here by our projector. So. Why not jump into the code now? And if you want to change the components of Lava, I told you Lava in the current version is modular. This is very nice because you can now exchange here uh, the 
Llama 1 model with different models. And here, for example, under Lava Docs Customize Component, this is a guide how to replace the large language model or your visual encoder with your choice of component. So it is easy to swap out the modular LLM or vision transformers and to tell you how to do this. So let's jump to the code sequence. Let us jump directly into GitHub, Lava. And here we go to the file. You have scripts, and I love scripts because they tell you exactly where you are. So as you can see, version 1.5, two days ago, was the last change. And what I wanted to show you is, look, it is ongoing. Because if you see here, fine-tuned with Laura, this was just added three days ago, and fine-tuned with quantized Laura. It is coming. So in the next days, if we look here, you see this is the training script from the original Lava, not the Lava 1.5 version. So if you look for fine-tune with Laura, I think you have to wait one or two days until here all the files will become available for you. Now, what is really nice and what I wanted to show you here, the version 1.5, Fine-tune and pre-train. As you see, this is all we have currently with deep speed. But I wanted to show you the model. Now, if you go there to Lava Model, you see exactly we have here the three main points. We have the LLM, our large language model, our Vicuna model. We have the multimodal encoder, our clip visual encoder, and the multimodal projector, modified last week. So you see, this is here exactly what we want to look at to understand what's happening. And if you go under the LLM here, we have Lava Llama, okay? So 140 lines, version 1.0, great. So what we have? We have our transformer, our auto config, auto model for causal language model, llama config, llama model, llama everything, beautiful. And then we have here our class, lava llama for causal language. And you have here your standard definition, beautiful. Now, the same we know this is here if we go here for the clip encoder for clip the visual encoder and if we go here you can see here from hugging face transformer library we import our clip vision model our clip image processor our clip vision configuration file and then we built here something what we call a clip vision tower you notice there's nothing specific you have you load here your model you have your features selected, and this is it. Now, the real interesting thing is here, our multimodal projector. This is where I think is the real beauty and the real cleverness of this model. So as you can see, for Llama 1.5 last week, there's now this builder file. And here we go, you see just 51 lines, and it makes all the difference in a nice model. So what we have now here, yeah, um, how to explain this? We have an identity map. We have a simple residual block, you remember, from overfitting and the vanishing gradient problems. And then we have here the built vision projector. And this here is, this is it? Yeah, this is it. This here is here our main building block, our built vision projector. So projector type, whatever it is, you have here. Where is it? Where is it? Here. Where? You know what? I write some comments into this file so that you see more clearly what is happening at one point. Give me a minute. So now here we are. I have now in my Google Colab notebook, Lava 1.5 multimodal projector explained with my comments. So I take the original code from Lava and I just add something that you understand where we are here in this process. So here we have our identity map source of identity function providing a new op forward function config property. Then here we have here our simple residual block 
with layer normalization and linear layers. And here you have here, if you want here, your sequential model with the linear layer and non-linear activation functions. And then we have here our main block build vision projector. Construct here a multimodal projector based on the configuration that we provided. Get the projector type from the config. If the projector type is linear, the simple linear layer is returned. If the projector is something with an, a GLU functionality, construct a multi-layer pair subtron with exactly this activation, non-linear activation function. This happens exactly here. Yeah, we have an identity, of course, and if unknown, we have an error. So you see, this is here the code. It is a rather, a rather beautiful code. There's nothing specific to it. We just have an MLP. But what I want to show you, wait a minute, why I do this work? Because if you encounter a problem and you don't know how to cope with this, let me show you another solution for you. Since we have GPT-4 code interpreter, or what it is called now, Advanced Data Analysis Tool GPT-4, what I do, I take the main three Python files. I take here the LLM from Llama, so my language encoder. I take here from Clip the visual encoder, my vision transformer large with 336 pixels. And I take here my, if you want, mapping operator, my mapping tensor, my builder or my multimodal projector, to be consistent, multimodal projector. So I give them here the main system files here from the repo of Lava, and I tell GPT-4, hey, I give you three files, the visual encoder from Clip, the Lama encoder, and most important here, the multimodal projector builder between them, for the mapping between the vector spaces. Explain the code of the multimodal projector in builder.python. GPT-4 comes back and says, okay, seems Builder is the most important, but should I have a look at the other four, two files? I said, like, yes, have a look. And then giving him the complete system information, not about the details, but the main intelligence, GPT-4 is now able to tell you what is happening now in this mapping functionality. And I say, hey, now that you have seen all the files, explain the multimodal projector and do I have to train this perceptron model? So he comes back and says, okay, multimodal projector. So instead of I commenting the code lines, <laughs> hey, we have GPT-4 here for you. So whatever you are not sure if you understand the code or what the code is doing, GPT-4 is a real nice solution, as you can see here. It tells you, yes, interface between different types of encoders especially the interface between the visual encoder from Clip and the Llama encoder in your case. The role of this projector is to map the features from one modality, a visual and image, into a space where they can effectively be combined or compared with features from another modality, text embeddings, vector embeddings. And he tells me, hey, there are different type of projectors, a linear projector, this was in Lava 1. Then we have here the perceptron with some non-linear activation functions where we learn here something. This is here what I showed you. And then we have here an identity map. And this is exactly what is used in the code. It's used which essentially performs no transformation. Transformation is needed here, vanishing gradient, and you know everything about what we have to cope with. And then now comes the nice part. Do you remember? that when I told about the two-stage process to pre-train and to fine-tune Lava 1.0. Now, look, remember the first part, and you will find out there's a high resemblance. So I say, hey, do I have to train this uh, mapping between vector spaces, this perceptron? And GPT-4 tells me, hey, whether or not you need to train the multimodal projector depends on the task and how well the pre-trained encoders, this means the clip visual encoder and the Llama, or large language model, Llama encoder, are aligned in the feature space. This is what I showed you here with Microsoft Autogen and when you use vector stores about the coherence in your data and the semantically correlated data in the vector space.
and says, hey, if the features of both modalities of vision and text are already well aligned, this is what I do with my weekly fine tuning, you may not need to train the projector. An example might be if both encoders were pre-trained on a similar data set. This is what I do weekly almost. But now comes the clever day. And they say, hey, if the feature spaces, or two spaces, vector spaces, are not aligned, or if the task requires a specific type of alignment not captured during the pre-training, you may need to fine-tune this uh, projector between the vector spaces. In this case, you would typically train the projector while keeping the encoders frozen, both encoders frozen. And this is exactly what we did in the first step of pre-training Lava 1.0. So you see, this is now in 1.5, we do exactly the same. Or you go from scratch. If you might find it beneficial to train the complete system, the projector from scratch, along with all the other components that create vector spaces, especially if the task is very different from those on which the encoders were pre-trained, or in my case, I have 20,000 new pages every week that I have to integrate into my AI system, then every one to three months, I have to pre-train everything in my system to have here a real nice how to say this generation of vector spaces that are high performant before I apply any mapping factor. Okay. Yes, if you're interacting physics, this is a form of coupling between the different subsystems, but this is out of scope. This would be theoretical physics. So let's talk about performance. How good is this system? Remember, it is a modular system. It is built of components that are years old, but let me surprise you. And here, this is from October 2023, and you see here in red on this spider or radar diagram that Lava 1.5 outperforms almost any other model. This is nice. Look, blue, blip 2, what I showed you at the very beginning of this video, has a very strong performance, but only in one typical type of benchmark. Then you have Instruct Blip that optimize this then yeah we'll tell you what this is uh, qven but you see that this is more or less the chinese version but our lava here is really outperforming in every different benchmark so nice to see a simple model built in an intelligent way for high performance and you know the nice thing about this yeah here what i wanted to show you was qven this is from the Alibaba Cloud Group. That's the training data, the mightiness of the training samples that you need to train this system. And yeah, it's at stay with QN. You see the training samples in millions. You need 1,400 million training samples here for the pre-training for the Alibaba version, let's call it this way. And even for Blip, you need Blip Instruct you need quite a lot of training samples. And look here at Lava 1.5, the pre-training in orange and the instruction, tune, instruction fine tuning phase in blue. Look at the amount of training samples that you need to have an out of scope performance. This is here a win-win situation, excellent performance, outperforming blip significantly, but from the training data, so nice. And you know what? It is not only the training data that are nice, because if you look at the computer infrastructure and the training time, remember, it's a small, simple system, but it is so cleverly built. So the authors tell us, hey, if we extend now Lava 1.5, we have about six hours of pre-training and 20 to 22 hours of visual instruction fine tuning of Lava 1.5. And they use eight A100 NVIDIA data center GPUs. So what is nice? The complete system, the pre-training and the fine tuning on all available uh, uh, data sets for this thing can be done in exactly 24 hours. And here a GPU node of one GPU node of 
just eight a100 is now really available almost to everybody in the cloud so this is a high performance modular system that you can use in the future it is kind of future proof you just optimize the components i showed you the code it's rather easy it uses off-the-shelf models it has here a really reasonable and acceptable time scale for the complete pre-training and the fine-tuning so i think this is a very nice model and this very nice model is now in direct competition with the topic of my last video when i showed you gpt4 vision or gpt4 with vision input so you see here this is an image this is an image of i think it's a california driver license and here the authors told us hey read the text in the image and from here the information in a json format so this is here the task gpt4 as the monster super intelligent okay lava 1.0 not really that amazing but lava 1.5 really nice performance on this task so you see if gpt4 vision is top-notch outperforming everything lava 1.5 is such a nice beautiful model i personally will continue to work with this i will look for the updates i will integrate my own llms into the lava system because it is a modular system and the performance is affordable and really respectable for this simple configuration by the way all this work what i showed you now was supported by national science foundation and the where is it grants funded by the korean government development for enhancement of agent collaboration and the development of a large korean language model hey super side effect have some korean llm developed for here this nation great every nation should have an llm available in their mother tongue that would be amazing yeah so the last sentence wanted to show you <laughs> the author say it is encouraging that lava 1.5 achieves the best performance with the simplest architecture a modular architecture academic compute also with academic data public available data sets and yields a fully reproducible and affordable baseline for future research now if you go with llama 2 you know llama 2 is not really an open source project by meta so maybe you use the next upcoming mistral mistral 13b or mistral 40b models that are more open source or whatever system you integrate be careful that you do not integrate here some intellectual property rights that are may, might be critical go with the open source model go with the public data set but i have to tell you the data sets they used are available great but of course remember they used gpt4 to generate 160,000 complex data sets training data sets so the hidden cost is of course here that you utilize gpt4 for this task but if you have this training data available yeah there's also a legal question if you can use gpt4 data for exactly this purpose and what are the legal limitations and whatsoever you know the whole story but we focus here only on the research part and for this task specific focus only lava 1.5 and its upcoming iteration and improvement is really something you should watch out for this was it for today i hope it was informative it would be great to see you in my next video and until then